host, Dr. Amanda, and if it's your first time here, you're in the right place if you are a growth-minded entrepreneur who's ready to get aligned with your inner power to get what you want in your life and business. Today we have an awesome topic. We're talking about how unconscious avoidance strategies keep you from getting what you want. Ooh, so we're going to break down what is an unconscious avoidance strategy? Why do you have unconscious avoidance strategies? Like, why do we do this? And how do you overcome it? What can you do to stop having unconscious avoidance strategies that keep you from getting what you want? So let's break this down first. And actually, the reason that I'm sharing this is because I did a mastermind webinar style event the other day, and I asked everybody what they do when they're feeling stuck. And we started talking about avoidance and how when we aren't sure what to do, we're not sure what the plan is, we're not sure how to get where we want to go, we can tend to do things to procrastinate. And so I want you to think about an unconscious avoidance strategy as a procrastination tool. (laughs) And when I say tool, it's our brain going, oh my God, I feel pain and I don't want to feel pain. So I'm going to do something that's less painful than the thing that I think I need to do in this case to grow my business, right? So let's say that you know that you need to practice lead gen and you need to do something to find new clients or customers and or make more sales and you're sitting at your computer and you're just staring at the screen and you've got these ideas of, oh, I should, should, and I put should in quotes because when you're shoulding yourself, you already know that you have resistance. So you're already avoiding something, but you're sitting there shoulding yourself and you're going, I should make phone calls. I should make some emails. I should do a video for social media, but hey, that laundry over there looks pretty good. (laughs) Which is funny because most of us probably don't usually want to do the laundry, but it's a great avoidance strategy when you're facing something you don't actually want to do. So unconscious avoidance strategies are our brain's way of avoiding pain and seeking pleasure. So in the simplest terms, we are animals and we are wired for survival. And what that means is that we are going to be wired to do something other than something that brings us pleasure that isn't a threat okay so whenever we perceive that something is going to be painful we see it as a threat and on the core animal level this is a survival threat where we go pain equals I don't feel good equals you know we go down this road of stress and at some point I'm going to die from the pain and I know that sounds dramatic but it's what our brain does it goes hey I'm wired to seek pleasure and feel good not to lean into things that seem painful And so if we have in our minds that growing our business through lead gen and whatever tools we've decided to use to do that is painful, we're going to avoid it. Neuroscience shows that we are much more likely to avoid pain than seek pleasure. And what I mean by that is short-term pain seems bigger than long-term gain. So let's say that you know that the steps you're gonna take are going to lead to more clients and you actually know the steps to do it. There are a million lead gen systems out there that work and we all know that, but we make up a whole bunch of excuses, unconscious avoidance strategies, that we tell ourselves about why it might not work. Oh, I don't know enough, or oh, this one won't work for me, or ooh, maybe I'll learn some more until before I implement that. And what's really going on is that you're scared of putting yourself out there, you're scared of failing, you're scared of looking like a fool, you're scared of whatever your mind makes up as being painful. And so in the moment, that seems more painful than the long-term pleasure if you were to take action and actually get what you wanted. That would be pleasurable in the long term. But our brain is very short-term oriented naturally. Like we're wired for avoiding pain in the moment and seeking pleasure. So we've actually got to train ourselves in the direction of our success to get a little bit more comfortable in the pain. And and I'll say this, as a mindset coach, you've got to reframe the pain. It's not actually pain. You're making it up in your mind, right? (laughs) I'm going to tell a story here. I went on a run the other day in in the mountains 
I live by the mountains and I do trail runs and I was running along listening to a podcast and I all of a sudden I heard this really loud noise and I was it sounded like a whole bunch of crickets and I stopped and I was like what was that and I look down and just a little ways behind where I had passed just it it was a huge rattlesnake huge (laughs) and I was like oh my god I almost got bitten by a rattlesnake because right where I had run it was coiled up and it was about 18 inches from right where I had run by and so I was up above it on the hill and I was looking down at it and of course I took a picture because I thought oh my god this is crazy but my heart was racing and I was like scared you know I thought wow that was a close call that was the closest call I've ever had on a trail run by myself I've seen tons of snakes I've trail run hundreds probably thousands of miles at this point and I yeah definitely thousands of miles and I have run into lots of snakes bears all kinds of things but you know it's usually in a safe situation often it'll be that the snake is like sunning itself on the path and it's not coiled up and I'll see it in advance this one I didn't see at all I almost stepped on it it was coiled it was rattling and pissed And that is a moment to be afraid. That's real fear, right? My survival instinct kicked in. And so the rest of the run, I kept my ear plug, you know, my, I have AirPods. I took them out. I was like, I need to pay attention and I need to be really hyper-focused because this means there are snakes in this area. And so at that point I was aware and it caused me to think like, Ooh, next time I go on a run in that area, I'm probably going to be hyper vigilant. And that's the way our brain is wired. Now I'm going to be tracking for snakes when I go on a run on that same path, because I will have had the fearful moment of thinking, Oh my God, I could have gotten bitten and gotten hurt. And our brain is really good at categorizing and holding on to that information. And so what happens is in our daily life when we're working and we're doing things that are stretching us out of our comfort zones, we make up in our mind that it is a survival threat. And this, of course, is not conscious. That's why these are called unconscious avoidance strategies. So you're unconsciously avoiding the pain that you've made up in your mind, and it's fear-based. So fear, I use the acronym for fear, future expectation of awful results the future expectation of awful results. So when you're fearing something that's made up in your mind, it's typically based on something you've experienced in the past. And and it's not usually conscious. It could be, but it might not be. So let's say you watched your parents have a business and they worked really hard and they weren't successful. And at some point they failed. Somewhere in your mind, you have the idea that you could fail as a business owner too. Or maybe you've tried a business before and it didn't succeed in the way that you expected or as quickly as you expected. And so you have in your mind, I'm a failure somewhere in your subconscious. And so that's being stored in your subconscious mind. So when you go to take action to build your business, you have a subconscious leash. I think of this as your inner critic leash. It's invisible cords that keep you in your comfort zone. So if in any way you have this perception that, oh my God, if I take actions to become a successful business owner and attract clients, customers into my fold and make more money, if anywhere in you, you think that that could have a bad result and you might fail or maybe you might be afraid that you're going to be so successful it'll be too much responsibility or people won't like you you're going to avoid the pain and so avoidance strategies will show up like (laughs) I had a really good conversation in my mastermind this morning about learning as a form of procrastination and as an avoidance strategy so an example of this Let's say that you ha- you're starting a business and you're starting to put yourself out there and you have a package created and you're like, okay, I'm going to start talking to people about it. And I, you know, I, I know that I should talk to people about it because that's the way that I get clients. But instead of doing that, you decide to buy another online course and learn more because you think, oh, I need to know more before I can put myself out there. This, I like to think of this as procrastinate learning. I can't remember where I heard that term, but it's so brilliant and accurate. It's procrastinate learning. So instead of doing the thing that feels painful and scary, which is get more clients, make those phone calls, you know, reach out to people through email or whatever version you use for whatever strategy you use for lead gen, you go, oh God, it'd be better to take a course. I need to learn more. And we're really good at justifying this in our mind. That's why it's an unconscious avoidance strategy. We tell ourselves, yeah, I I definitely need to learn more. Oh, I couldn't put myself out there yet because 
I don't quite know enough and people are going to think, I don't know what I'm doing or what if I don't have the answer, yada, 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 right? All of those inner critic limiting beliefs that we beat ourselves up with and tell ourselves to cause ourselves not to take action in the direction of our long-term success, which would be long-term pleasurable. But we're so short-sighted that we avoid the pain in the moment and we aren't willing to go through the pain in the moment to get to the long-term success of having a business that we ha- where we have financial freedom, where we get to serve the world in ways that we enjoy, where we get to work from home and do the things that we want, right? So learning is an example of an unconscious avoidance strategy. Now, obviously, I love to learn. Here you are listening to this podcast. You're learning. Learning can be incredible. And yes, you need to keep learning to grow your business. And I think that it's important to never stop learning. This is what keeps your brain fresh and clear. And it keeps you on your expert toes and keeps you growing. And that is important. What I'm talking about here is not that version of learning. I'm talking about when you use it as an avoidance strategy to feed your imposter syndrome and you're using it as a way to procrastinate from doing the thing that would actually lead to you building your business or getting what you want, whatever it is, right? This might not have to do with building your business. It might be going to the gym. It might be having a a scary conversation with somebody because it feels scary to have the conversation. And so instead of having the conversation, you go clean the house, which is another unconscious avoidance strategy for some people. (laughs) So let me list a few and, and let's see if these resonate for you. Learning can be an unconscious avoidance strategy social media scrolling. So you make up the story that you're getting on to do some, you know, quote unquote research for how you should make a post, but then you get lost down the social media scrolling rabbit hole for three hours and three hours goes by and you haven't done anything except for make yourself feel bad because you're procrastinating and not putting yourself out there and not sharing any value with anyone, which of course then doesn't lead to anybody coming to work with you. Cleaning can be an unconscious avoidance strategy. I know a lot of people that use this one. And of course, cleaning sometimes can be an energy shifter. So let's say you've been at your desk working and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna get up and move around and clean my house a little bit and declutter my space. That can be a great thing to do. When you're using it as an unconscious avoidance strategy, you gotta start to recognize and pay attention to that and go, wait, can those dishes wait until later? Is this the best use of my time right now? And I want you to write that question down. This is a powerful recognition question and reframe question. Is this the best use of my time? Okay, so when you notice yourself procrastinating or feeling some fear and then you use one of these unconscious avoidance strategies ask yourself is this the best use of my time and if it's not do something different do a reframe okay fighting can be an unconscious avoidance strategy you could actually start a fight to avoid your feelings and I know that sounds funny because fighting can feel uncomfortable for people but often instead of having a challenging conversation that would lead to long-term connection, you might start a fight to disconnect because you're too scared to face how you really feel. And so fighting is one of those unconscious avoidance strategies that I see people use a lot. And I used to do this big time. I used to not be able to say what I needed with my ex-husband. And so instead of leaning into the discomfort of that, I would start a fight so that I could get space. And I wasn't doing this consciously, of course. And when I look back later, after I've developed a lot of different communication skills, I realized, oh my God, I was using that as an unconscious avoidance strategy because I didn't know how to say, can I have some space? I didn't know to ask how to ask for my needs to be met. I didn't even know what my needs were. And so instead of figuring it out and learning, oh, I got to learn some communication skills. I would start a fight so that we would get mad at each other and then I'd get space. And really what I needed was space. I could have just said, hey, you know, I'm needing some space today. Can I, I'd like to go on a walk. Can you watch the kids, right? Uh, Pretending you're fine. This is an interesting one. So people can unconsciously avoid pain of not feeling good by saying they're fine and pretending they're fine. And then it causes the underlying discomfort to last longer, but in the moment it feels less painful because you don't have to confront the actual feelings. So this could happen in relationship to other people. This could happen with your own feelings about your life or business right now. So you could be feeling like, unhappy with where you're at but you're not willing to slow down enough to even face that you're feeling unhappy and so you busy yourself with being fine so you do a lot of stuff that's just 
you know, fine. I used to think of this as either you're, you're fucked. So you're in a state of victimhood and you're like, I am screwed. Everything sucks. Or you're fine, which I think of as the curse of the comfort zone where you're like, I'm okay. Things aren't great. They're not horrible. Life's not falling apart. And it's not really, I don't feel good either. I just feel fine. Right. So pretending you're fine is avoiding why you only feel fine. So, and it'll never help you break through to the gold mine of feeling, fantastic right or fulfilled so so that frustrated to fulfilled spectrum like we want to be fulfilled and fulfillment feels really good and it takes you being willing to break through this comfort zone zone of using unconscious avoidance strategies and getting to the next level by sitting in the pain and discomfort of the current moment so when you notice yourself avoiding something. When you notice yourself doing one of these avoidance strategies, you want to sit in the discomfort just for a few minutes and just start training yourself to sit in discomfort a little bit longer. And then what you'll notice is that the discomfort subsides and then you can take just one small step in the direction that you've been avoiding and then see what happens. Okay. We've got to train ourselves to grow. We've got to train ourselves to evolve by being willing to sit in things that are uncomfortable. And this is wild because it sounds so easy, but wow, those unconscious avoidance strategies are powerful. Something that could be really useful for you today is to write down what are my unconscious avoidance strategies. So you want to get really clear on yours and what your versions are. So I gave some examples and yours were probably different. So learning, social media, scrolling, cleaning, fighting, pretending you're fine. It could be exercise. Some people use exercise as an avoidance strategy. Obviously, exercising can have benefits. Benefits, it can also have drawbacks if you're using it as an excuse to not do other things. And the wild thing there is that you can justify it in your mind because it's a healthy habit usually, right? Exercise is typically a healthy habit. But let's say that like our bodies don't only need a certain amount of exercise to be healthy and aligned. And if you are shifting your values toward building a business that you love or a life that you love and it's going to require some attention in other areas besides exercising you've got to shift some of your time we all have 24 hours in the day and we get to choose how we spend that time and so if you're avoiding something and you're using something else that gives you more pain more uh, pleasure than the thing you're avoiding you want to look at what that is and assess is this healthy is this the best use of my time am I doing this thing in a healthy way learning is another one of those where it's like it can be masked as like well learning is a good thing right <laughs> and everything actually is neutral learning is neutral social media scrolling is neutral fighting is even neutral it's just that the way that you perceive it and your intention behind it is what matters. So we must learn to be intentional be beings. Inner power requires you to be conscious and intentional, okay? So inner power is you deciding to be aware, self-actualized, self-reflective, self right? Where you go, hey, am I using unconscious avoidance strategies? Why am I using unconscious avoidance strategies? What is this getting me? And what am I avoiding feeling? What am I avoiding experiencing? And that takes a master. And, and when I say it takes a master, it's, it's not that you ever get to this level of mastery because I think we're always evolving. I've talked about the spiral growth curve where you're going to just keep expanding. And so it, what it means is to be a master of yourself is that you are intentionally choosing to look within and understand yourself be a person who can sit in the pain and discomfort of a moment to get to the next level of yourself, right? It's not possible to break through to higher and higher levels of yourself if you're not willing to sit in discomfort. That's really important to remember. It is impossible to grow without discomfort because, it, and it depends on how you perceive it. Growth can feel good or it can feel bad. And it's true that growth requires stretch, right? When we grow our bodies, we stretch. When we grow our minds, they stretch. When we grow our businesses, we stretch. And stretch can feel scary and terrifying and uncomfortable, or it can feel growth-filled and opportunistic and amazing. 
It's your perception of it that makes it feel the way that it does. So if your intention is to be aligned with your inner power to get what you want in your life and your business, you must be willing to look at your avoidance strategies and ask yourself, am I willing to drop these and sit in some discomfort in the moment to take it to the next level of myself, of my relationships, of my life, of my business, of my financial well-being? That is the true spiritual master in my mind. That is the true inner power master. And if you want that, you got to be willing to sit in some discomfort and get out of your comfort zone and being able to sit in that quote unquote pain so that you can get to the quote unquote pleasure because realistically there is no such thing even as those things, right? We, we make things painful and pleasurable by our perception. It's such wild stuff to think about. Okay. So what I want you to do is to, to start to play with this. I've already given you some tips in here, but I want to give you the inner power formula. So it's recognize, reframe, repeat to reprogram. Recognize, reframe, repeat, repeat to reprogram. So when I say recognize, I'm talking about those parts where you slow down enough to ask yourself, is this the best use of my time? Am I stuck in an unconscious avoidance strategy? What are my unconscious avoidance strategies? You gotta slow down enough to recognize. You gotta ask yourself these hard questions. Then you reframe. A reframe could even be those questions. A reframe could be, hmm, what could I do differently right now? What could I do differently with my time right now? How can I sit in the pain right now? A reframe could be you sitting in the pain for one minute. Just one minute can change everything, right? I've been really thinking of this idea lately of just how powerful three deep breaths are. So a reframe could be, I'm going to sit in the feeling of this for three deep breaths while I ask myself, is this the best use of my time? And then I'm going to decide, okay, do I do the laundry or do I grow my business? Do I take steps to grow my business? Okay, do I go take another course that I probably don't need because I probably already have enough information? Or do I call make the call to see if I can get a new client right that's a reframe a reframe can be a mindset switch or it can be a habitual behavioral switch it can be you doing something different and then the third step is you got to repeat this to reprogram when you are learning to be a conscious being and you're learning to access your inner power you must retrain your brain in the direction of your success because you're wired to be an animal who seeks pleasure and avoids pain. So you've actually got to reprogram yourself into being somebody who's willing to sit in some discomfort. And that takes repetition. The only way to program your subconscious mind is repetition and hypnosis. And so hypnosis could be meditation. And you you can go to a hypnosis coach or you could do meditation. Repeating rewires your brain as well. So recognize, reframe, repeat. So if you're noticing that you're stuck using unconscious avoidance strategies, notice it, recognize it, reframe it, and repeat. And I would love to hear from you. I, I love hearing from my people and understanding what are what's what's keeping you stuck. What are your unconscious avoidance strategies? How can I help you? I'm here to help you. So uh, I just released a really awesome course. It's called Inner Power 101. So go, so go to innerpower101.com, inner power101.com and it's a three video two hour course it'll help you learn the inner power formula and it gives you five strategies to help you align with your inner power these are actionable practical strategies that you can use immediately to start to reprogram your subconscious mind and get different results so go to inner power 101 and if you feel like dming me or hanging out with me and sharing what you got from today's episode just go use the hashtag or actually search for me on Instagram would be the easiest place at inner power daily at inner power daily and share with me. I love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being here with me again today to talk about your unconscious avoidance strategies, why we have them, what to do about them, how you can actually reprogram yourself out of it so that you can get what you want. All right. Until next time, I'm sending you hugs and inner power high five.